YouTube, August Army, how's it going? Fresh out the fucking shower. I'm feeling fresh as fuck. About to hit the gym, guys. It's another push day. I know you just saw a freaking push video, right? Uh, incline bench and all that good shit. Well, I'm pretty much going to do the same exact thing. Uh, in case you're wondering, um, I don't switch up my workout too often. Uh, I'm doing a legs push, pull, off, repeat schedule, right? So it's pretty much three days followed by an off day and it repeats. And uh, when it comes to legs, I have three workouts that I alternate. When it comes to my push day, I have pretty much two workouts that I alternate, though one of them is really dominant over the other. Um, I do one probably three times before I do the other one once. Three or four times before I do the other one once. And when it comes to my pull days, I usually just have one solid workout where I might switch up just one of the exercises inside of it. I'm not too big on constantly switching shit up um, in terms of exercises. Before I might have switched shit up when it came to the load, like when I was doing 531. But now, um, obviously I'm not doing 531. And I'm not constantly switching up my exercises to confuse the muscles or to, you know, um, just finding new ways to make myself sore. It's, it's really not my kind of workout. That's why I'm not into muscle confusion or constantly changing or finding new exercises or new, you know, new splits and that sort of thing. My whole thing is about picking maybe a couple exercises for each body part and focusing on making those exercises strong as fuck. And after I feel like, okay, I'm strong or whatever, and usually I've, I've never decided, okay, I'm strong enough in this exercise. Um, you know, I might add in a different exercise and switch that one out. And that'll explain why the incline bench press stays as the first exercise of my push day. It'll explain why I've pretty much kept the decline dumbbell as the second one, the Arnold press is the third one, and so on and so on. And pretty much for the same thing with my leg day, same thing for my pull day. So on the way to the gym, it's kind of where I decide, you know, okay, what kind of day is it today? How do I feel today, right? Well, this morning, for example, felt amazing. Had a great sleep last night. My girlfriend spent the night for like three days straight, so I'm feeling really refreshed, really great. My mentality been way up there, so just feeling awesome. Uh, you all know I the weights I did in my last push workout, so this workout, I'm gonna up that shit. Instead of doing five sets of eight on the incline, I'm just gonna stick to three sets of eight, but this time at 240 pounds, right? Likewise, when it comes to the Arnold Press, I'm going to up that bitch to 85-pound dumbbells. Unfortunately, they don't have higher than 100-pound dumbbells here. So I'll just try to complete, you know, three to four sets of uh, 15 reps on the decline, okay? So that's my goal for today. Pick your battles, right? Some days you won't feel, you know, exceptional. You'll feel like, eh, I don't really feel great today. And those are the days where you might want to just stick to the same weight, same reps, or maybe even take it slightly easy, just slightly. Or, um, you know, it's all about picking your battles. You don't have to go 100% all the time, just most of the time, right? What up, guys? I figured I'd walk you through my warm-up work. Keep in mind, this is after I've already done foam rolling, both for my back, my glutes, my legs, um, and also my chest. This was after I did my shoulder mobility warm-up. I'll include a link in the description box. Here I am just going for, I think, 10 reps. I like to start off with just 10 or 12, even maybe 15 reps on the incline bench, get my shit nice and warmed up. From there I usually go over and pick up 5 or 10 pound dumbbells. This kind of helps me war warm up my, my elbows, my bicep, my forearm. I, I really love doing this before my push days. Then I usually walk over to a push down a cable machine and I'll do anywhere between 10 to 20 reps, warm up my triceps and especially just warm up my elbow joint, get that shit nice and nice and good. Um, like I said, this is after I've already done my primary uh, dynamic stretching routine, which helps me get like my entire body and after foam rolling and shit. Then I usually go back to the incline bench and usually do maybe five to ten more reps with just the bar. Keep in mind, I'm only warming up with weights that aren't gonna cause any sort of fatigue, all right? I could probably do a 50 rep set of this shit and still hit my weights, but I'm not going to do that for retarded. Also between sets of my pushes or my major pushes, I'll, I'll do maybe five, six, seven, eight of these right here. Basically band pull-aparts, but since um, I lost my bands, um, I've been doing it with, with a uh, leg wrap 
I'll uh, basically fold it um, twice so it's pretty much cut into thirds and I'll just do like five, six, seven, eight band pull aparts with my freaking leg wraps. From there, um, and keep in mind I'm going for 245 pounds for five cents of eight. I'll go over, uh, add 135 to the bar and you can see that my reps are uh, really explosive but at the same time my ass is on the bench, my shoulders are back. Uh, not painfully retracted, but my shoulders are nice and back. From there, I add 40 pounds. I'm at 175 now. I don't know the percentages that I'm jumping up in weight. I just know that this is a comfortable jump for me. And at the same time, I'm not trying to actually kill myself here. Um, I prefer straight sets um, over pyramiding, over drop sets and that sort of thing, just because with straight sets, it's the easiest for me to track my gains. It's the easiest for me to make gains. And uh, that's just my thing. I think I did three reps right there, right, guys? Maybe two reps. I'm not, not really sure. And like I said, you know, I'm doing my freaking band pull-aparts or my leg wrap pull-aparts. Help me get that um, my shoulder joint nice and lubricated and uh, just nice, mobile. Um, helps with my shoulder mobility, my rotator cuff health feels great but I'm constantly doing these um, between sets not maybe every single set but the majority of sets especially when I'm doing some sort of bench pressing or shoulder pressing all right guys final activation slash acclimation set right here All right, now when it comes to grip on the incline bench press, there's no real right or wrong way. A lot of people might do extremely wide grip. That's cool and all. That might be fucking your shoulders hardcore. But for other people, that wide grip might not be fucking their shoulders. What it all comes down to is finding your happy zone of where you're wide enough to feel great amount of uh, stimulation in the chest. You're bringing it down to uh, an area of your chest where you're feeling it in the chest and not so much your shoulders getting wrecked, that sort of thing. So um, where you bring the bar down to, as well as how wide your grip is, is all gonna come, ta come down to your individual um, body, okay? And what you prefer, what feels great for you, etc. This certain grip for me and where I bring it down to on my chest makes me feel wonderful. There's no problems with it. And combined with mobility and flexibility drills, foam rolling, all that good shit, I have no fucking problems when it comes to my shoulder joints. For my chest. No pec tears, no shoulder rippings, rotator cuff injuries, etc. Alright, so I finished my three sets of eight. I was like, fuck it, motherfuckers. I'm going for four. Uh, woo! One, two, one. Oh. Oh. Push it. Come on. You got it. Okay. <sighs> PRs, baby. Hi, okay. guys. Fifth set of eight. I only was going to do three sets of eight today, but I feel on. And when you feel on, go ahead and, uh, you know, push it. Don't kill yourself. I wanted sets of 15, but sets of 12 made more sense and they felt better since I totally wrecked my shit on the incline bench, totally just annihilated my chest, so there wasn't too much left for it. Um, in terms of acclimation, I basically just hit a set of 50 pound dumbbells for five before doing this one. And same thing for uh, the Arnold press, which you're gonna see in a little bit. 
I use 85 pound dumbbells and my acclimation to that was simply just one set of 45 pound dumbbells for like a set of three or four or five. That's pretty much it. My shit's all warmed up, so there's no need to totally tire myself. By the way, you mire that fucking drop. Okay, so <laughs> two sets of eight, one set of seven. It's it's great, but so close. That, my friends, is an example of failure. Okay, it's not when you hit five sets of eight and the last rep on the eighth rep, it's super tough and it looks like you barely got it up. I mean, some people might say that's failure, cool and all, right? But to me, failure is more like failing on the seventh rep or say on the eighth rep, it actually doesn't go up unless someone helps it go up or forces that rep out of you. Okay, failure is when you can't complete the set. Um, you can't just, you can't complete on a, you're done. You're on a certain rep, you can't fucking go on without someone helping you. That to me is what failure is um, in terms of working out. And like I said, guys, I don't go beyond that point. So what you just saw was me hit failure on the eighth rep of the third set Okay, that's how I see failure. It's actually the inability to finish the rep or to finish the set. Same exact thing, right? So I don't work beyond that point. I see that as not a very good idea. A popular question on my Facebook was, Matt, what's the proper form for flies? And I know he was referring to dumbbell flies, but I could also give you the example through this machine fly. It may not look like it, but I'm trying my best to keep my shoulders back, as much back as possible. I'm creating a comfortable position for my shoulders to be healthy and to not get overly fucked. You want the maximum amount of chest stimulation since that's what this is all about, right? Getting the chest stimulation, but you want it at the littlest cost possible. So you want those shoulders to not get fucked, but at the same time, get the most amount of stimulation on your chest. And that's something you kind of have to feel for yourself. So put those shoulders back, try not to move them very much, and put most of the pressure on the chest in a good plane of motion. All right, y'all, I've been noticing all kinds of improvement in my lateral head of the tricep. That's the uh, pretty much the most visible one right here, although I'm fat as fuck and you can't even tell that it's there, that it's that it exists. Um, I've been getting all kinds of gains by mainly focusing on my weights and making sure that I'm progressing. Whereas in the past, I would just pick weight and fuck with it for like three or four sets. All right guys, calf raises. In the past, I was doing like 10 sets of eight, whether it was on this or the hack squat calf raise. 
Um, now I'm trying out six sets of six, obviously with a much higher weight. Uh, if you guys haven't been experiencing growth with your calves, maybe try it the way that I'm doing it here with my pause at the bottom, um, explosive, positive to the top, a pause at the top, and then a two second negative. So what's the tempo? Like one, zero, um, you know, one, two, is that right? I don't know. But anyways, just slow down the negatives and try not to bounce. That's what I rec really recommend for the calves. That's what most people recommend these days. And um, I've been noticing gains from doing it this, this way. Then I finished it with this bad boy right here. Last time I did this with the same weight, I only did like two sets of eight and then two sets of six. Um, this time I just went for four sets of eight and I got them all. So that's progress to me. I'll probably keep this again for another four sets of eight, same weight before progressing uh, 10 pounds heavier. All right, YouTubes, post-workout meal. We went home, had some protein shakes, creatine, and that kind of shit. Now we're here at uh, Sushi Mon in Roseville. Uh, Sushi Mon by Sky. It's kind of like on the border of Roseville and um, Rockland. Just go down the street, you're in Rockland. And uh, Gaines, right? All kinds. All right, now we're in, uh, we're at the fountains at Big Spoon, gonna get some uh, frozen yogurt, you know what I'm saying? Milfs everywhere. One of my YouTubes, <laughs> um, we highly recommend trying out the cinnamon flavor at Froyo. Or at, uh, at your local Froyo vendor, whether it's a Big Spoon or whatever. But believe me, this here is delicious. It's amazing. Um, absolutely love it. And yeah. Oh, his cake!